Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews and today we're talking LiPos, lithium polymer batteries, the power source for our electric models. Without these batteries we simply couldn't fly electric models the way we do today. You can store an enormous amount of energy in these little batteries which means you've got to be very careful about selecting the right battery and treating it properly. And today I'm going to try and demystify some of the numbers on these batteries, give you a little bit of a, a background on how to look after them, how to charge them, how to store them. So that hopefully when you buy your lipos you'll get a good long life out of them you won't burn your house down right i'd also like to thank initially the gens ace people who sent me these little wad of batteries here for this particular episode and i've been looking using these reviewing them and there'll be full review of these coming up and some whole lot of other lipos coming up soon on rc model reviews but um, i'm going to first of all start talking about the numbers on these batteries and i'll find one that's easy to deal with let's move these out of the way so we can concentrate on this one now there's a big number on here 1000 what does that number mean well that's the c and it's in milliamps so a milliamp is one thousandth of an amp so 1000 milliamps is one amp that's the capacity of this battery now other batteries such as the ones from hobby king the turnergy batteries they, this is the same capacity of battery from Hobby King. It has a 1.0, so that's in amps, but this is in milliamps. Why are they different? I don't know. Try and, try and explain this to the Chinese, why they can't be consistent. I don't know. But anyway, so 1 amp, 1,000 milliamps, exactly the same thing. So you might think, well, these batteries are identical, aren't they? They're both the same. What could be different? Well, it's time to look at some of the other numbers on here. Remember that 1 amp is the C, or 1000 milliamps is the C. That number will come in important later on. In fact, it'll come important, become important now. If I show you closely on this battery, it says 25C in here somewhere. 25C, can you see that? 25C, 11.1 volts, 25C. So what does that mean? We already know that C is 1 amp, or 1000 milliamps. So 25 times C would be 25 amps. What does it mean, 25 amps? Well, that's the amount of current you can draw from this battery. You can safely draw 25 amps from this battery without having to worry about it catching on fire, exploding, or being damaged by that amount of current. So there you go. That's the current delivering capability of the battery, the C rating. So this is a 25C, 25 amps. The Hobby King one, the Turnergy one, that's a 30 to 40C, as you can see written on there somewhere, 30 to 40C. That means I can draw between 30 and 40 amps out of this battery. So these batteries aren't the same. This is only good for 25 amps. This is good for 30 to 40 amps. Why does this just have one C number, 25, and this has two, 30 and 40? Well, this is the 25C is generally a continuous rating. Like the, the first number is the continuous rating. So you can continuously draw 25 amps from this battery without damaging it. You can continuously draw 30 amps out of this battery without damaging it. But for a short period of time, you can draw up to 40 amps. That's called the burst rating, the burst C rating. So for maybe 15 seconds, 10, 15 seconds, you can draw 40 amps out of this battery without it bursting into flames and burning your model down. You can probably draw about 30 amps out of this as it's burst rating, but they don't specify the burst rating, so you don't know. Um, Gens A seem to be very conservative when they rate their batteries, so I would be thinking this would probably do uh, at least a 30 to 35 amp burst without any problems at all. In my tests, they seem to stand up pretty well, but as do the Turnergies. And you might think, well, gosh, why would you buy a 25C battery that can only do 25 amps when you can get one that does up to 40? Well, there's reasons why you might do that. If you look closely at these batteries, the Gens Ace is a little smaller, and it's also a little lighter. So there's a price to pay for this extra current capability, this extra C rating. Generally, high C batteries weigh a bit more, and they're a little bit bigger because you get nothing for free in this world. So if you've got a really small model, a slow, you know, park flyer model, and it doesn't need to, or it's not going to draw more than 25 amps, then this might be a better battery because it's lighter and you might get longer flight times. Put this one in, it'll deliver the right current, but it's a bit heavier, so it might not actually get as much flight time out of this higher C battery. So sometimes it's good to have a lower C battery, depending on your model. And I'll talk more about choosing the right battery for your model later on in another video in this series when we look at how to match up batteries, ESCs, motors, propellers, and models, but that's for another video. Now, we'll look at this C rating a bit further. Um, let's have a look at this one. 450 milliamps This is the capacity of this battery. That's the C, 450 milliamps, but it also has a rating of, I better check it. Mm -mm -mm. It also has a rating of 25C. So you can draw 25 times 0.45 amps or 450 milliamps, and that is 
I'm not going to work that out. You can work that out. But obviously it's less than you can draw out of this one. Because 1 amp times 25C is 25 amps. Just over half an amp times 25C is probably about 11 amps. I'm not sure. I can't do the mental math. So you can draw less current out of that. But obviously it's smaller. So you don't be, only be natural that for the same C rating you draw less out of it. And then you get to the big ones. The huge batteries like this 5300 pack from Gen's Ace. There you go. And that's rated at 30C. See out there? 30C. So how much current could we draw out of this quickly? Boy at the back of the room with your hand up. What's your answer? That's right. It is 30 times 5300 milliamps or 5.3 amps times 30. So you can draw a lot more current out of this battery than the other little battery. But uh, there's also nanotech batteries just to make life even more confusing. And this one has an amazing C rating. If you look there, see that? 25 to 50 C. So this is another 1 amp battery. You could draw up to 50 amps out of this little baby on burst just for a little while, up to 50 amps. And so there's really a huge range of LiPos to choose from and that's why I'm going to do a whole video on choosing the right LiPo for your model, your motor and your ESC because I couldn't fit it into this one which I'm talking mainly about the batteries themselves. Um, now charging, that's an issue isn't it? How do you charge these things? Well I've done a video that shows you how to charge your LiPo battery with a 4 button charger and generally speaking that's where the C number comes in again, this big number on the front. In the case of something like the, the 1000 milliamp battery from Gen's Ace or the the 1 amp battery from Turnergy, then you charge it at that number there, 1 amp or 1000 milliamps. That's called the 1C charge rate because 1 times 1 amp is 1 amp. There you go. So when you put this on your 4 button charge, you'll charge it at 1 amp and it will take over an hour to charge if it's dead flat. Um, you charge this one at 5.3 amps because that's the C rating. I've got a 2200 milliamp here battery somewhere. Look at that, there's a 2200. I'd charge that at, anyone guess? That's right, 2.2 amps, 1C. And that is normally the standard charge current for most LiPos, but, you knew there'd be a but, didn't you? If you've got something like this nanotech battery, you can actually charge it at up to 5C. What does that mean? Well, you can charge this little baby at up to 5 amps, because 5 times 1 amp, 5 times the C rating, is 5 amps. And you'll find that information written on the back, and I've covered it up with some Velcro. Sorry about that. But yeah, you'll find the charge information often on the back. But if you are unsure of how much current you can use to charge your LiPo, then just charge it at the 1C figure and you're safe. I think all the LiPos you'll find out there will happily charge at 1C. Many will charge at 2C, some at 5, some will even charge at as much as 10C. But that doesn't mean you have to charge them at 10C because, rule of thumb, the gentler you are to your LiPos, the longer they will last. So, even though you could charge this thing at 5 amps, charging it at 1 amp will mean it will last much longer and give you better service. Charging the half an amp would make it last even longer still because it gives the chemicals inside more time to change from one state to another without getting hot or gassing and all that sort of stuff. So generally speaking, charge at the slowest rate you need to. If, you, if you're out the field and you want to get another flight in, then sure, whack it on 5C charge, 5 amps so you can get a flight in. But if you're charging up before you go out to the field, then oh, maybe you've got three or four hours, you can charge it at half a C. Half a C on this would be 500 milliamps and that'll be kinder and gentler to it. So that's charging. The other thing I forgot to talk about is the other numbers on here. Like, see it says 4S 1P. Just there, 4S 1P. What does that mean? Well, S stands for series. And if you look here, you can see there are some cells. This is actually made up of four cells. One, two, three, four individual cells. So 4S means four cells in series. And that's how this gets its 14 something volt rating. See that, 14.8 volts? Because each of those cells nominally produces 3.7 volts. So in the case of a 3 cell pack, 3 times 3.7 is 11.1 .1, as it says up there somewhere. 11.1 .1 volts. So the number of cells determines the voltage of your pack. And the voltage is important of course because the more volts the more power. All else being equal. So when you see a 3S pack it means it's got 3 cells in series. When you see a 4S pack it's got 4 cells in series. And the voltage is easy to calculate from there. And that, that P number says 1P, you can pretty much forget that. I don't think there are very many LiPos out there for model aircraft use that use more than one set of cells. Because if you have a 2P, if it had say that said 4S 2P, that would mean there'd be four cells in series and another four cells in series which are then in parallel with these. Are you confused? You should be. You don't need to know too much about that. Just suffice to say all your batteries you buy will probably be 
one P, or they won't even mention P because there's no point, because there is nothing in parallel, they're only in series. So there you go, that's your uh, batteries, that's your charging, that's your C rating. Now, one thing else that makes life so much more fun when you're using LiPos is these things. So that is a connector. This is a Dean's connector, sometimes known as a T connector. This is an XT60 connector, which I think Hobby King sort of made popular. And this is a JST connector. And believe me, there are dozens of other connectors you can get on these LiPos. And of course, you can't connect a Dean's to a, to a XT60, it won't fit. So when you're buying your LiPos, try and buy them with the right connector to match your model. And if you can't get them with the right connector, then you're either going to have to cut the wires and solder your own connector on, or you can be really clever like me, make up one of these, a little adapter. All I've done here is I've got the plug on one side that I want, the plug on the other side I want. I've soldered them together and I've covered them with a little bit of heat shrink just to make sure that I can't drop anything on there and short stuff out. So this will convert a Dean's connector to an XT60. So if I have a model that expects a battery with one of these on it, but I've only got a battery with that on it, I can just plug this in here, like so. And now, look, it's just like it's got an XT60 on it. But of course, I can unplug it and I can plug it into another battery if I want, or I can use this in another plane that only wants a Dean's. Isn't that clever? Of course, you can go from Dean's to XT60 and you can go from XT60 to Dean's or you can go from JST to anything, you know, you can do whatever you like. Just get yourself some plugs and connectors and solder them up so you can make your own adapters to use your battery, use different batteries and different models. Piece of cake. Lovely. Now, let's assume you've been out flying, you've had a couple of good flights, maybe half a dozen flights, and it's time to go home. What do you do? Well, you don't just throw your batteries in a bag and drive off. What you need to do is make sure your batteries are actually at a storage charge. And what's a storage charge? Well, that's a voltage which is partway between being fully charged and partway between being fully empty. And that voltage is generally about 3.8 volts per cell. Now, this is where I'll show you some accessories you really should get if you're going to be using LiPo batteries. And here they are. The first one is something like this. It doesn't have to be this particular one. This is just one. It comes in many shapes and flavors. You see the different cases and different colors. Hobby King have them. This one I got from somewhere else, but Hobby King has exactly the same thing in a different case with Hobby King or something written on it. And it's a battery tester and a watt meter and all sorts of clever things. So what I can do is I can take any battery laying around and I can see by plugging its balance lead into this little set of things here, I can see how much or how much it's charged to. This goes beep. And then I click on this button and then it says LiPo something rather. And there we go. This one tells me that it is 44% charged. So I know immediately how much charges in that battery. I know because nothing worse than having a whole lot of batteries all the same you charge half of them and then you mix them up you don't know which ones are charged and which ones aren't. Well, use this and you can find out pretty quickly which is which. Now, I can also, with this, find out the voltage of each individual cell. And you can see I've, this was one I've, I've used a while ago and I left it in nearly storage charge. So I would have flown this and then decided, okay, it's close enough to put it away. Because it's close enough to 3.8 volts per cell. So three point, what is it, 3.84, 3.81, 3.84. That's fine. Anything under 3.85 and above 3.7 is fine for storage. And why do we need storage? Why do we need a storage charge? Because if you leave it full, if you leave your battery fully charged, then the chemicals in here are in a highly reactive state. And that means that they will break down. They'll degrade very quickly over time. And instead of you coming back and finding your battery still fully charged, you'll come back and you'll find it may even be puffed up, may even have inflated because as those chemicals break down, they release gases, which cause the whole thing to blow up like a balloon. And that's not good. So don't leave your batteries fully charged. Another reason for not leaving them fully charged is, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a lot of energy in here. And if there's a lot of energy in there and you have an accident, then it can release that energy suddenly in the form of a lot of heat, even flame. So you can set your house on fire, set your car on fire, set your model on fire if you, don't, if you leave it stored fully charged and something goes wrong. But you don't leave it fully discharged either. Don't leave it flat because the same thing happens. If your cell is completely flat, then unwanted chemical reactions take place. And when you go to recharge it, it won't take anywhere near the charge it should, or it may not even charge at all. Your charger may object because the voltage is too low and it'll say the pack is dead because in a discharged state, a whole lot of other chemical reactions take place, which are nasty ones, and they rob the cell of its capacity, its ability to store electricity. So at the end of the day, on your final flight, try and fly your battery until you're measuring it with this and it says around about 3.8 volts per cell. So if you come down and it's 3.9 or 4 volts per cell, 
go up and have a bit more of a fly. If you come down and you weigh down at say 3.3 volts per cell, then before you go home, or as soon as you get home, put a bit of charge in to bring it up to 3.8 volts. You can, if you look on your four button charger, you'll find a setting called storage charge. You use that to bring all your cells up to 3.8 volts per cell, and your lipos will love you for doing that because they'll last a whole lot longer than they did before. Now, as I say, this is just one version. There's another one you can get like this. And if I can work out which way around to plug it in, I'll use the big lipo. This should be in a storage charge, I think. And I don't know which way this goes. Let's have a look. Um, here we go. Um, look at this. Woohoo! I don't know if you can actually see this in here because the, the don't, LEDs don't show up very well on the camera. But this is saying 3.77, 3.83, and totally is 15.1. So there we go. It shows, just cycles through each individual. God, it's terrible, isn't it? I don't think the camera's picking it up at all. But you can cycle through it, the voltage of each individual cell and shows you on here what they are. So it's a much smaller one than this. You can actually put this in your model. This is, I think, a Fly Dream product, but you can buy them from other manufacturers. And it's got some really loud horns on it. So this also enables you to set a safety voltage so that when you're flying around, if your battery starts getting low, this will beep like hell and tell you it's time to land before your battery gets too flat. So a handy little device you can have, stick it on, especially if you're flying something like a quad rotor or a tricopter, where you don't want your battery going flat because it'll fall from the sky. This is a brilliant little device and everyone should have one for those important electric models so there you go one of those one of these and you'll see why you need one of these later on when i show you how to match your model to your motor to your prop to your esc and to your battery because this also tells you how many watts your motor's chewing up and that's very important because that also tells you how many amps and if you know how many amps you're drawing you know what size battery to get there you go more to come on this subject from RC Model Reviews. But in the meantime, I hope you've learned a little bit about LiPos and how to use them, how to choose them, what the numbers mean. And I look forward to giving you more information in another, another of the series of All About on RC Model Reviews.